Um, yeah, hi, how's it going? Um, this is where we ended up last stream. However, when we loaded it into game, none of the actual highlighting of the tiles, um, even though they are... Um, if you're actually on the animation stuff... Um, even though they are defined, um, they are defined on the terrain. <laughs> um, they don't actually show up when you play in game. Um, and it seems like that's because the game never thought uh, that they were going to have anybody who had a map, or I guess the map never actually uh, was considered to have people walking on it if that same portion was going to be animated. Um, so what Jumza is attempting to do with the map is a little out of outside baseball, I guess. That's the best way to describe it. Um, so what we're going to do instead is try something else. Um, and that would be we're going to remove all of the animated meshes from the map. Um, so I have another version saved with this all still here. So um, we're not really losing any work or anything. I mean, we are, but um, we're going to try a different experiment, I guess. That's the best way to put it. Um, and then we're going to remove animation from the map itself. If I don't do this here, these meshes will actually stay in the edited map. Um, and it'll just kind of be a d distraction. edit those out, and then go ahead and save. Okay, so, um, and we're back to where we were before with our lovely stationary one here. Um, go ahead and group, and 
at the, all the lovely things going on here. So, what I we need to try anyways, there's two things that we ran into. Um, and that was the inconsistencies in height. So we did have three versions of, of height on the map. We had the base one right here, which was two up. We had... Actually, we can just do this, right? So we had. Oh, actually, these aren't connected, are they? Okay. Well, that's, that's exciting. Um, pull that up. Select all the stuff we currently have here real quick. We're gonna move it over one just so we can play with it really quickly. Okay, that should be all of that. That should be there. Okay. So we remove the bottom layer first one and then we moved it down and we moved it over and then we also had it on this side so those were there and then we did the same thing everything around anyways. <laughs> um, anyway, we'll just, we'll just lift it off here so we can mess with that stuff. And then we just had various, various things, so I'll just get everything situated like we had it before, and then we'll adjust it to our new ideas. We're just going to get back to normal mesh like we had before. Except these are non-animated ones, so they are primary and will just show up like we would like to play them in-game. Obviously that doesn't allow us the freedom to move them or shift them up and down like we want to. So we are going to have to experiment with a few different ways to accomplish that. Ah, just so we can get back to where we started at our previous stream on Monday. We're going to go ahead and just reset it like we had before. Problem here is if you bring this back down. Oh, I should probably start this, huh? There we go. Uh, but if you, the problem is, let's say 
you wanted to lower this one down. So that would make this two heights up. If you wanted to lower all of these outside ones, and you just had the middle ones left, brings you down to like three height, right? And this is depth one already, so it's even lower. what counted as what in the terrain. So this is four high and this is one depth, so it's not really like feasible for somebody to be able to jump that high. So you're running into gameplay issues if, you know, the wrong ones went down. And so you're talking about it in the Discord after we did everything. And um So, let me try to figure out if um, I can read through this real quick. Worried about how it would play if the two lowest platforms get dropped, since the intention is that any of them can drop any time, but units with low jump won't be able to make it out of the water at all. Um, and then we got suggested that... Um, stairs that lead to the sides. So the stairs on this one and this one lead to both the second and third heights. As much as it takes the whole thing more complicated. So two varied heights plus the middle. So what we would do is we would lower all of these ones down. So... Plus the middle. The way all the corners are the lowest. And the side middles are a little taller, and the center is the tallest. And then put a single block next to all the side middles, so you don't have any issues if they... if the, quarters, the corners ended up falling first. So what that means is we would be bringing all of these ones up to here. And then we would leave the sides. We would lower the sides. add a step on the outside of each one. Or maybe even two steps. Just kind of like a, a pyramid that goes up a little bit. That way, no matter what what happens with any of these platforms, a player with the default jump is able to access them at any point. So... Let's get working on that and getting all that set up. We're going to attempt the fool's errand of selecting everything and trying to move it all at once. Which means that if I were to misclick outside, I would lose all of my selection. I don't know, it just felt like today was like a really hectic day for everywhere. My work, um, Discord, personal stuff. I had a insurance issue myself that when I had my knee surgery, um, we were using my wife's insurance and she soon 
basically, it was a really good insurance policy, and we wanted to get, if I was going to get anything done with it, um, we wanted to use that one before I transitioned over to my work one that was mine, um, that covered us, but it was much, much less, but it wasn't nearly as good. And so we did that, and we paid everything, and everything was nice and great. And then the end of last year, um, we got bill in the mail for all of my surgery that happened the year, but the entire year before. So like two years of of nothing. And then the insurance apparently did an audit or did something, but they said that I had another active insurance as my primary, and which is not true. I did not have an, another as my primary. It was still my wife's, and then I transitioned over. But they had it marked as the incorrect version, so I had to call and say, "Hey." You can even talk to uh, the insurance that you, I, I did have, and you consider, are considering I have, and they will tell you that no, they did not cover me during the, the service that you were talking about, the date of service is, I guess, the, the technical term. And so I did, and they did, and they called, and then they got everything reversed. And I was, we were fine. And then a month later, um, I started getting calls from the same place. They're like, hey, um, you still, you owe us money for all the insurance. They're saying that you uh, had different insurance at the time. I'm like, well, I just took care of this. I had all the information still, luckily. Um, and then I called the insurance yet again. And they're like, no, we, uh, we show all your records here as being fine, and, um, you're good. And I'm like, oh, okay, why are they saying this way? And then I called the mech, and then they, they the building place, I said, okay, well, we'll do it again. And I got a call again two months later, this morning, and apparently... So the thing is, the state that my insurance was in was not my original, like about our home state. It was in Illinois. And they, the people that here, the representative of that insurance company, apparently can't, they can't reach out directly to because it's in a different state so they don't are like in the same network so they rep they reach out to the representative of my state for that same company instead of actually directly talking to the company that did it. when i tried to do that they said they couldn't help me and they d gave me all the information to contact the actual state that held all my stuff so conflicting information lovely enough um but yeah like I don't know what else to do about any of this. <laughs> I hope it eventually gets resolved, but I don't really have much hope in anything. Okay. Anyway, back to this stuff. So we have everything set up. So we have the varied heights, so we have the two down here, and then we're going to add another step. Um, and we probably should add a clone step. And we'll do it. So it's right here. And like I said, I think I kind of wanted to do... Where it's like a pyramid kind of thing. here. And do the same thing over here. And then we'll 
grab all this, and then we gotta put it on each side. Um, and then we'll have to make sure there's geometry on the other side. Um, for such a small map, we are consuming a lot of polys. <laughs> Which I find very funny. Um, apparently I just missed one. That's because there's so many different variations of wit and what could happen that you kind of have to just have them everywhere. Um, that being said, we're, we're not really like gonna run into any issues. And then what we want to do is we're going to do that and then we're going to rotate. Kind of hope they line up. It looks like they did. Save, since we did a lot of rearranging and a lot of moving around. Um, and that seems like it would compensate for everything. Um, so we have all that stuff situated and in place, and basically, if any of these were to be removed, um, we wouldn't have any gaps in any geometry. So I think we're really we're nice and safe on that that in that regard. So our next order of business is to figure out. Well, we should probably kind of get this terrain stuff taken care of, right? because all of them are basically using the same thing because they all came from the center. So let's address that real quick. Shouldn't be too hard. Everything's kind of already set for here. So this one's zero, 03. And so it would be zero, 04. And zero, 05. And zero. This one, zero, six. And that takes care of that one. Okay, and then so all of these will be one in the X. And then all of these would be two in the X. And then all of these would be three. and then down. Five. And six. Seven. Fine. And 
Okay, and then we take these and add the zero and the Z. And one. I, I did hype up a little bit that, uh, um, weird square. It is a weird square, I agree. I did hype up that the Sifu game that came out on Tuesday. Um, this would be four, right? Zero, one, two, three, four. I ended up picking it up yesterday. And man, is it cool. It is kind of like a modern day beat em up. <laughs> I actually didn't really like Dying Light. I really liked Dead Island. I was playing it with my wife and a bunch of other stuff. I like you. <laughs> I don't know. I, go home. Yeah, I don't know. I just I didn't enjoy Dying Light. I don't know what it was. It's just something. Ninja Weasel play play Sifu. In fact, I kind of want to just play it right now. <laughs> it's so good. I know it's the same. Yeah, well... I don't know, it just didn't have the same... Maybe I, because I played Dead Island, I just didn't... I, I'd already seen all of it. I felt like I... I don't know. Yeah, it's so good. <laughs> yeah, and the soundtrack is so good too. Oh man, it's so fun. And it's hard, and it's ridiculous. And it's just really well made. <laughs> it was pretty good, though. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it was just because I was playing it with my wife, and then my wife didn't like the new one, so we didn't end up playing too much for... Yeah. I don't know, we just had, I guess, the opposite opinion on the game. That's okay. So that's the middle map, and it's 5-5, five, five, that's 0-0, zero, zero, and that's 10-10. Ten, ten. Okay. I'm just dressed. <laughs> I'm not saying it's a bad game. I'm not saying that it is in any way worse than Dead Island. I'm just saying I didn't like it. And then these are all wall ones, right? Probably. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> uh oh. It's <laughs> funny. But I, was, <laughs> I hope I hope the second one, I hope Dying Light 2 is actually really good. Uh, I'm assuming you've been playing it or have have played it or I hope it's good. So first. I, again, I'm not saying it's a bad game. <laughs> nice, that's awesome. That seems really cool. Okay, so I got everything set there. So now... <sighs> this is the weird part. Because we still need some mechanism to hide what we're looking for. 
Oh, nice. Why, hello there, my foot is a toaster. <laughs> Thank you very much for the raid. How how was your stream, sir? Or madam? I mean, feet fitting in toasters is not very gender-specific, so... How are you doing? It's a toast, right? <laughs> I do like toast. Well, anyways, um, if you don't know who I am, um, I am... We played Earthbound. Nice! That just, uh, just was announced for the Switch stuff for today, right? Everyone likes toast. Everyone should like toast. That's exactly right. Um, if you don't know what we're doing here, uh, we are making a custom Final Fantasy Tactics map. Um, I can actually just get it in game while you guys are all here. And uh, that's what I do. I, I make custom maps for Final Fantasy Tactics. Oh, nice! Are you gonna work? You're not gonna work, are you? There it is! Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay. So... We just saved our map. We, ju we were just kind of doing some setup um, before we kind of move on to the more difficult theme. Um, System engaged. Oh, thank you very much for the follow. I really appreciate that. Um, spoilers: This is not Mandalia Plains. It is the map we are making, which is a water map for. Uh, member of the Final Fantasy Hactics community by the name of Jumza. And that's a custom app for... for the game. <laughs> Mandalia drains, exactly. Oh, I apparently forgot to adjust the terrain, so that chemist is in the middle of a, br a brick, brick wall. So that's the thing. In fact, all of these people are in weird spots. Because because I'm I'm a dummy and forgot to adjust that, um, so I'm just gonna fast forward it, and they're all gonna move around and do crazy stuff after Algus gets upset. There we go. Okay, but as you can see. It, uh, it now actually renders all of the stuff, so that was our issue before. <laughs> yeah, now my terrain is set correctly, so we're gonna walk in midair and a bunch of other things, but... Okay, but yeah, that's, uh, how easy it is to get our stuff into the game, because we have a custom level editor and a few other things, but I, uh, I've been moving stuff around, so the, uh... The train's a little off. So, let's adjust that. You can kind of see the polygon there. So, they are no longer depth one. And then we should be able to do that for all of these on the side. Oh, no longer depth one. Okay. And just like to. Yeah, my name is Armored Cory. I make Final Fantasy Tactics custom maps, and um, I play Final Fantasy Tactics mods. Sometimes, when new ones come out or things that are interesting to me come out, <laughs> I also try to play tactics games, new ones um, that come out to kind of gauge and learn some map making stuff and things like that. Um, in the midst of making my own mod for Final Fantasy Tactics, where you create um, based on a bunch of the unexplored lands in the game. So we have a few to show off. Um, 
Yeah, no worries. Thank you for stopping by, and thank you very much for the raid and the support and the follow and all that stuff. I really appreciate it. Okay, so that should fix all of our terrain issues there. So we'll go ahead and save that. Okay. So, our big thing is we need to be able to make these invisible at any time. Um, and we also need to be able to make each indivisible, sorry, invisible separately. And that is going to most likely be a texture animation. So right now we have some palette animations, and we have a lot of options. Um, this goes all the way down path behind my camera, and um, there is a big old 31 at the bottom. So we have a total of 32 because it starts at zero. Um, and then the other ones are actually um, occupied currently by the palette animations, which is how the water is doing what it's doing. So what we want to do is we want to make a UV animation. And then we're going to make a looping one. And so basically, um, I'm going to just take the last texture page because we don't have anything around there right now. And it's kind of nice and easy to just abuse. So what we're going to do is we're going to have, we're just going to have one in the top right, top left. Sorry, I know my, my directions. Uh, we're going to keep it as the size that it is. Um, and I'm going to move all, the, all this over to here. Keep it there. And let's give it three frames just to start off with. So we need a... Um, can I? I can move this, right? And that, that doesn't matter. Okay. So this is the source. This this box right here is the source. And these three are the, tie the animations that happen. So... What we want to do, we actually need four frames. So I'm going to do that. So I need a base frame. I need a transition to like one or two transition colors. And then I need an invisible frame. So as of right now, it kind of fits the mold of what I'm doing. So what we're going to do is that's, that's there. And it's actually, it's just, just going to loop. So as soon as we move, this beautiful piece that we have right now to page three. And I get it in the corner. I think that is the exact same spot I have the animation. It's really hard to tell. Um, what palette is this on? Palette 10. So we're going to flip over to our texture, and we're going to open, which is Jumza's map, and this one. Um, already indexed, and I think it's already using... We're going to just make sure. We're going to save that one as the default. So what we did is we made a palette um, that just allows us to do stuff. And so here is that. And then the second thing we need to do is flip back over here. And we're going to go ahead and save. Well, oh, sorry, the UI gets a little weird. But we should be able to export the UV map itself. We'll just do it over the top of the original one there. And so what that does is that if we can go ahead and open that one as well. It's pretty, pretty bleak right now, but that's okay because we don't really need much. We're going to copy it by selecting everything and then copy, and then we're going to edit, and we're going to paste special, and we're going to add it as an individual layer to our, our thing here.
so what we want to do is we're just going to take... Oh, uh, we need to deselect that. We're just going to take a 20 by 20 square here, which is this. We're going to copy that. We're just going to top it, toss it over the top of this. Really? You just... Oh, it's because it's on the other layer. Whoops. We're still working on the... Uh... So if I do that, I'm going to put that down here. Oh, for some reason it didn't... Okay. Why is this having giving me so much trouble? I'm going to try again. So we're going to get rid of the UVs. So they're not even existing. I'm going to grab all this stuff here. Copy it. Bring it down here. There we go. And then bring it into... The UV is quite big. So we'll just put it kind of like right here. So it's maybe like in line with that and then kind of go from there and see what we can do. Um, so we're going to do that. And then I also, I think I have, I don't have a palette from the actual map itself. So we're just going to do our own little uh, fun thing. And that is, we're going to grab here and then we're going to move that over and we're going to give it let's just say halfway here and then we're going to do another one maybe doing this wrong but uh, then we'll do this one and then we'll need to do I think that's zero that's basically transparent yeah okay so this transparent so that should be the source You're listening to Rhythm and Pixels Radio Radio Radio. Okay, so I'm just gonna do <laughs> this. This is the last Rican, and you're listening to Rhythm and Pixels. When I need to get through a tough work day, nothing helps me better than Rob's stoic technical prowess and oh Cornell's velvety smooth baritone voice. <laughs> this is just it's the not uh, just for fun, it's also for work. I'm listening to a, a radio, so it has commercials. So it's exciting. Um, so, okay, so that should be our source, um, and then we need our, we don't have, for some reason, I got rid of our, there. Okay, so, our source, two color transitions, and then it goes invisible. Let me go ahead and save that. Um, and by that, I mean we save it without the UVs, because it'll be silly and funky, um, if we do that. So then, we can move that out of the way, and then we can import that texture we just saved. And if you see, it's already trying to play the animation. So we'll go back in there, and we'll edit it. And so now, so it's a 20 by 20, so that is actually big. Interesting. a source right there. I know it's probably not the right spot for it, but... Um, and then... Why are you not letting me? There we go.
So, now if we go back to the animation, and let's say we double So see how it is itself actually becoming invisible eventually. Um, it doesn't have much data to work with. It literally has four frames right now. It's got the source. It's got the two transition frames that we gave it. And then it becomes invisible. Um, and then we can kind of make it go much slower. So the idea is to have that as an option for a good a good portion of this map and I don't know how how I'm gonna do that because we're we're very limited we're technically not very limited on texture space because we can do just like one big image, right? We could do one big thing and then have kind of repeating sides, maybe. And then you'd have the re literally the rest of the map be nothing but texture animations, like three almost three texture pages of them to be able to, to have with little one squares and then you have you also have this one so this is what kind of what I'm talking about is um, I'm gonna move all of their texture pages to the right spot and then we move it over here And obviously it goes to the wrong color, but that's because it's on the wrong. And so what would happen is you would, instead of it looping like it is right now, um, causing a ridiculous seizure-like idea, um, you would have it just run once and you just call that animation once so it would do it would do the transition and then it would be gone um, and of course the example here is only four frames so we can make it have more um, I just don't know exactly like my original idea was to kind of have like water pixels come in and then go away and so it like transitioned into like the invisible portion like, in and then out kind of thing. I don't know how to accomplish that, other than, a, like, a lot of trial and error on the texture portion. Uh, but this is basically the concept. Um, and what we would do is we have one animation, and we would do that for each individual portions. But what that does is this has to be... Um, so if I were to go here and edit, um, and then do on trigger... Um, there has to be a, a source animation. So when it's not moving, there, there are polygons here. Um, they're all, again, just on a space of the texture map that's transparent. So you would have to go into here. Um, reopen our... I think... For some reason that texture map doesn't feel right. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and export it again, just to... Um, I don't know if it does save. I'm gonna try it. Yes, okay. Uh, file, open. Go back in there. just seems so big. Um, 
Yeah, it's definitely much larger than something like bees. Interesting. Doesn't seem to be working 100%. Because it output a 47 by 46 size box. Uh, and the UV is definitely not that big. So, we might have to poke Garmichael for that to see what is exactly going on here. But yeah, if I were to copy this... It moved. Yeah, it just doesn't seem like it has a reference for some reason. Or it, since there's multiple ones in the same spot, it gets a little funky, maybe? Um, it doesn't know how to interpret them, so it just keeps growing in size. Not quite sure, but it doesn't seem to be outputting everything 100% correct, which is okay. It's very new, very updated, hasn't been tested too much, so we'll have to go ahead and do that. In the meantime, we would just, like I said, copy. No. Um, and apparently all of this has to move over too. It needed to be over by one. Why is it like hiding? Oh, is it because I I have an extra? I have an extra thing selected. Okay, and then we grab this, and like I said, I'll just put it somewhere. Okay, I hope we can... There. I'll go ahead and save that. Um, so we need the source somewhere, and since those are all reference, we don't, we can't have them referencing the same one. So what we would need to do is, um, we have, let's just say we have this one here, and this one here. Um, and let's just make sure we have them set up correctly with the, uh, normals and everything. Okay, so at most we would need Unless the top is just a repeating texture, which I don't think would look good if all that if that's all it was. It, we can we can maybe try, but um, you would need let's say this is a corner piece, and then that corner piece could possibly be rotated in different directions. You would need a center piece, and then you would need one. So that's three texture animations just for that one top. Because like I said earlier, it has to have a reference point and it has to have an animation for that. If they all use the same reference point, you get 
what we were having before where they all everything looks the same. So if you want your source, like all of the animation frames on it disappearing and everything like that can be the same depending on how we accomplish the wipe. Um, so let me go ahead and take a look at something real quick. I don't know how far back I need to go, but there should be a, a video that, um, let's have the internet up. Okay, so there was, I think it was like right here. This is the reference we were given. Okay, so you see how this portion right here is, um, it's going to start lighting up. We'll play it back at like 0.25 speed. So the edges kind of like light up and then it, that portion of the arena goes down into the water and then it's, it shrinks. That's kind of what we're trying to recreate here. So we would need, if we wanted to do anything even similar to that, um, let me pull that back up. But if you see, like, even the textures on these ones, it's like a big symbol, um, and it does look like it goes across, like, in between the arena. So if we wanted to pull something off like it's one big image on the top, each individual piece would need an animation. So it gets like the crack in between, and then it gets like a, a burning, you know, obviously the effects on the side. And it's glowing so bright you can't really see the middle, and then it just kind of goes down. So it kind of like flashes, and then the actual animation of the thing goes down. Where us, we're going to kind of run through a, some kind of animation of, of different transitions in color. And then, so it, the thing here, it would be, we would have the same image, except we would bring in the color. over over a certain period of time. And that's why I said, like, we could probably have on page, texture page zero, we could probably have, like, the big image right here on the texture sheet. And then somehow, and then get some kind of repeatable side or something for, um, for these portions here. And we could fit, like, it probably fit all of that on, on this pet texture page if we wanted to. And then we would then probably have to piece that apart and bring it somewhere else. <laughs> I mean, I guess if you change the the color of, of these to a different uh, color, like a, a red color, maybe it could be. But unfortunately, no, it's not, it's not a lava map. As much as... Why do you... <laughs> I do not. Okay, so... So that's the thing. That's our, that's our big, our big dilemma as of right now. This map is... I don't believe... <laughs> So all of these are the exact same space, just repeated constantly, and that's fine. We're gonna keep, we're gonna keep all that. I 
actually probably will lift all of that up and then do the lighting so it doesn't te technically recognize that there is a piece here. So it at least looks kind of okay when, uh, when one of them goes missing. Okay, so... It's a 9 by 9, right? Zero, one, two. We don't have enough space. And no one got my joke. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Alec. I feel like we almost have to limit. Like, we could have the nine unique spaces on the middle, and then kind of have border pieces on the outside and then corner pieces and then these parts are all um, generic ones. I think that would probably be the easiest way to do the, the piece. Hmm. Yeah, I think that would be the one of the only ways we could Accomplish anything even close to what we're looking for. So let's kind of have some fun. Um, so, what we're going to do here is we're going to have. to be moved to the right by three pixels. I'm going to do that off. One, two, three. There. Okay. So, we at least have some kind some kind of reference. And then like do I descend it? Like do I have it come in from side? Let's just let's just have some experimenting. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and save. And then we're just gonna play around with um, I need to edit the need to export the palette that we have here. Edit palettes, it's using this one, so we're going to go ahead and export that one out. And we're just going to call this test. And click OK. Flip over here. Again, we're going to save this one as default just to make sure. And we're going to load in. weird that this has an extra used to my old water bottle that didn't have a straw and it just had a big pop top. 
Okay, um... We don't need all these greens. So let's get some blues. I mean, I don't plan on saying no. very, very fitting. most of his stream today because of work, which is unfortunate, but... Uh, 
Uh, this book gets a little confusing. Um, so that comes in. It's fully there, there, and there. And now it's back. And so we have... Obviously, we're going to be able to do this in a better capacity. And then this spot right. I think it's like halfway is what I want, like right here. Get this, and then. Probably too much for for that. So it comes in and then comes out. Probably cut that down to like one color. Oh, and I haven't even updated it to. Second, I need to save this palette. Obviously, we could perfect it a little bit more, but. And then add detail if we really, really have a lot of stuff. Like, we could have it not like so uniform, so it's just one, one thing. Um, and maybe use some different colors. It's kind of the concept. See how it like goes in there and then wipes it away? Um, also, a little confused on why. Oh, that's why. 
Okay. Why was there? There was a light at the top. And that's what I said, like, it, it, it's gotta be, like, different ones, because it needs different angles to look interesting. It's like, so, like, the corner here would need to have it come from the side towards the point. So, from this side and this side towards the middle. And then it would meet, basically, in line with this one. And then wipe back, wipe back out in the same spot. Excuse me. I almost feel like it should, like one of the, the color, the second color should never like fully go away. But that's at least my concept, like. You would do it custom for each each thing, and then you would just run it, um, run that specific. I have to. I would have to make sure I kept it really organized <laughs> and documented it for Jumza. But um, I think that's the best thing we can kind of hope for. So I guess what we do now is. We make one big texture with basically all of this laid out. And then we start working on all the animation stuff. So they all have to be 20 by 20 to fit as an animation, so... Um, I guess that's what we'll do. Um, this sh shouldn't be too hard. Like I said, it's just gonna be one big square. page, which will be the first one, and we'll get them all to be a thing. Oh, those are all those ones, okay. Uh, we'll get those to be in a different spot. Heck, we might even, we'll throw them on a different page, just to get them out of here. And that's this. Um, and that, that doesn't matter which texture page it's on, right? As long as that image is there, I'm good. it'll just run through that same palette animation, which is palette 2, right? Yes. And the animations. So yeah, it uses palette ID 2 to do 
this lovely thing. Okay. Okay, perfect. Um, so we'll just start here, and we'll... Okay, and then, so I want to do is I want to copy, and we're just going to paste, and we're going to move. trying to figure out here is if I can fit it nine across with the size that we have. The answer looks like it's going to be a, a yes. Again, this is probably literally just for planning and so I can draw as one cohesive image. All of these ones are probably going to be split up amongst different texture pages because they're all going to have texture animations. get weird. Yes. That's the easiest way. Just like it was before. that way sometimes. Just listening to the nice music and just kind of going across. interesting thing in the world, but we are uh, just going through our UVs. I wish you could hold that. Ah, dang it. I thought I moved on. so far, and then we'll just have to, uh, uh... It's how long I've been working on the map. Um, I thought it would be a little bit of an interesting idea to, uh, kind of give a little bit of scope and perspective on 
how time consuming and in general how this stuff kind of works. So. just laying out the UVs because I think we have our concept and the way we're going to accomplish this more or less figured out. As long as I can uh, select the right stuff, you know. How you doing, Salty? Things going okay? Down, but glad that you got everything recovered and everything. I'm sure that it's frustrating, that kind of thing. Having to main maintain it and all that fun stuff. I had a long holiday for the lunar year, just starting to get into the swing of things. There you go. I hope your holiday was nice. We got most of the way done with the Chocoa Forest. Um, we have all the branches more or less finished. I just need to do some polish portions on them. And then um, the last thing was... Um, I had to... I was going to have to redo the middle tree again because the thing that worked out for the branches made the uh, middle tree look... Pretty rough in comparison, so I think I have at least a concept down for that, but it was one of those things where you kind of just have to uh, take a break from it. Maybe do a little bit of work off stream and um, come back to it eventually. Overall, it's done. Um, I like a lot of it, and the base, the base of it is at least finished. But not technically complete by any. reasonable assessment. But that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just looking forward to get most of it, like, looking right, because eventually it, like, it started kind of coming together near the end with all the branches and everything looking really nice. I just want the main tree to also feel that way when I get to it. This map, um, this has kind of been uh, a big experiment, I guess. Um, this is for Jumza. He, he want, it's a boss battle. And there's a lot of technical stuff that he wants to do with it that make it more complicated while 
as a map by itself, it's actually pretty sim simplistic. Um, I mean, which isn't a bad thing, because I, I do think it will make a great and fun battle map. Um, even not the non-invent version, I think, would be kind of look cool for, like, Battlegrounds or something like that. Um, but it's, it's just basically, like, different, different heights and uh, kind of like an adjustable arena with water on the side. Okay, so we have all of our UVs laid out. We'll go ahead and save that. Um, and then I want to see, since they're all laid out now, if this works. Because it worked for... Um, so this is a new version of GDX. Um, Garmichael had an epiphany on how to do UV mapping and exporting it to file. Yeah, it's... For some reason, it is... Everything's bigger. Yeah, it's exporting all the UVs out at, like, 35 or 34, when there are only 20, 20 pieces, right? If I grab one of these. Yeah, they're only 20, 20 by 20s. 29 to there, and then 9 to 20. UV space is only, uh, it's a 20 by 20 square, but when it outputs it via here, so there's something broken with it. It seems like it works on vanilla maps, but not if you edit, edit things. Like, it has a different scale, like... What is the canvas size for this? It's it's right. It's 256 by 1024 because that's the same as this. So the scale of the scale of things is still correct. It's just outputting weirdly. I wonder if that is because things are overlapped? I don't know, I'll have to send him the file, this file and see if uh, he can troubleshoot what's going on. But um, we'll just kind of proceed to our normal everyday kind of way we go about uh, making UVs for ourselves. Okay, so that is just one square, so we are going to take this and then just do it once. ends. Okay, so it ends at this piece right here. There's two. Three. Four. here, and now that we have that, one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, Super nice if, um, okay, so I want to see if I, this is actually correct here. So if I do this, um, go here. Oh, dang it. here and I said select and I want to attract by 20 square brush okay so that should be the outside tile and I want just so I can kind of have and then if I do it again This should be the center. Oh, sorry guys. I was on the wrong seat. Okay. So basically, I don't... I just want to have the borders be different. I want all of these ones to kind of be the same. And then an image on the middle. back to here, I want to expand by 20, and we're going to use the same brush, and then modify and contract by 20, and go back to here. Okay. So that's the basics, right? That's the basics of what we're looking for. Now we need to kind of figure out This palette number four is what we want to go with. So I'm going to go ahead and export that one. Edit palette. It's got a lot of green on it, but that's okay. And we'll do this called Pithead or Platform Top. Flip back over here. ignore that for now and hope for the best. Okay. So if we look at it, like this is kind of our, I don't know what you want to call it, our reference. That's probably the best, best way to put it. So we want to do like 
Got highlight border around most of it. It's kind of like the so that like that's the deeper part. It looks like. That's not as deep. And then those are like the shadow portions. So if we were to like a what color would we use? We use this one. Which of course is the one that we currently have set for that. So that means that we need Okay. Let's solve that issue. Okay, so we've got, like, the corners. And we want to have some kind of, like, brick. We could do that. But I kind of want, like... So it looks like a bit of an inlay. Are we, is that a different color? No, that's the same color. It's not really obvious what what palette they used. Like that seems the closest, but I don't think it's it. to find out, right? Ten. It is ten. Interesting. used one, and these ones used six. Interesting. So that was for those. weird to me that that's the colors they would use.
they have a, a normal color. And they have like a highlight on the bottom. So let's say like Pixels did I just do there? One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, and then what I want to do is kind of make something like this. So I want to make centers super quickly. Okay, and so they have, for like corners, it looks like they have kind of darker spots. How much did I go? Two out? Okay. portion. They have highlights on certain sides.
Hey, thanks for listening to Rhythm and Pixels Radio. So that's kind of, that's pretty much working out. I have like a highlight. So that kind of gives it um, like a, a depth, you know, on the that portion there. And then it looks like we can kind of have like bits and pieces where there's just like a blank spot if we wanted to. Or little like bricks and cuts around. It's weird that they have that opening. That's a shadow. I guess I'm just kind of using the same color the rest of the way in, right? So let's see how that looks. Um, go in here. Very good for it. And then all of these. Okay, so... Gets a little weird when we... We have a highlight on this side here. So it kind of looks like we went this way with the texture. Is that, is that right? Did I? Nope. Okay. I went this way. It's a little weird because... It is technically the bottom left of the map, but... Which means that we should probably move...
Okay. So it just doesn't have... It's not, like, the lighting itself is the thing that kind of brightens it up some more. Definitely has a, a smoother, smoother feel. So we'll have to look at a lot of stone textures on what makes them interesting to look at comparatively. So there's plenty of stone in, in Final Fantasy Tactics that we can take a look at. Um, we'll just have to kind of use that as reference, but keep the same colors here. Which is pretty cool. Um, and I do want to pop back over to here. So he kind of wanted to have, like, the... Uh, an image of... Leviathan. Be, like, in the center. That was, like, his... That was his concept for the image in the center, was be some kind of, like, the snake kind of thing. same concept with the highlights and stuff for the image here. Um, he, like I said, he did mention that it would be kind of for the whole thing. Um, and I, for me, that gets good because of what we have to, what we have to do to split this up is we have to have at least some kind of repetition somewhere. And if you look at, as of right now, like, the corners themselves... And then these are all repeated here, so we can kind of, we can get away with just two animations. As long as I, I can rotate them around and have them be in different spots. Or I have to do four separate ones for each angle. Um, I gotta just make sure that the highlight is the same on all of them. That's a, unfortunately, yeah. I think we should probably go back and adjust. So basically this part right here just has to be the same. Still looks nice on the inside. so drastically outside.
Definitely still learning stuff. dark portions, I just don't like the highlight too much. Like, that doesn't look anything like that game. <laughs> Lovely uh, <laughs> pixel art right there. And there's the one from Tactics that we were just looking at. sets from random phantom train <laughs> there's the helmet oh it just has all of the monsters Um, so Jumzo wanted, sorry I didn't see that, <laughs> uh, Jumzo wanted Leviathan, or some form of, like, pixel art version of it to be, like, in a symbol in the middle. 
I was just kind of taking a peek. That may be a, a pixel art version of... Revenant Wings Final Fantasy Twelve. Uh, get lucky. It's brave studios. All the bravest. That's not straight up in here, is it? And Spriders resource. Just Google in general. That's what you're looking for. See, here's the tactics one. It's just not in like scale to pixels, right? <laughs> Should be okay. What's it? You know what it's on? What system it's on? Maybe it's under R for Revenant Wings. Yes, okay. Ah, there it is. That's Atmos, Bahamut, Diablos, Leviathan. Oh, my goodness, look at that guy. Interesting concept. Nice. That's really cool. It's kind of like all the sprites and stuff for the, the tail whip and things. So if we were to do something, like you, can you cut it and then like load your own palette on top of it? I'm assuming probably not, right? Like, let's switch it. Oh. Is that good? It's, it's index, okay. Lose a bunch of stuff, but the, it's the same palette as our rock here. Interesting. I almost liked it just as like the default, <laughs> which is kind of funny. <laughs> That's actually pretty awesome. <laughs> That's funny. Obviously, stretching won't be won't be too much. So silly. Um, okay. Um, what I want to do now is do like a ring around it. to do no that's add
adding to it. Okay, I want a minus for that. Slightly worried doing this. Palette's wrong. So, I think if, like, if I load the default, it's missing one? It's only 15 colors? And when I load the, uh, previous one, it's 16. So oh, cool, I don't know what I did.
so we, I guess maybe it's just because of the lighting? So if I move... Like that kind of lines up with the colors, right? Or here. Now I just want it to be bigger. <laughs> that looks really cool, though. So now how do you make it less... something to break up. The texture now, right? Like that's basically what we're down to. If you want it bigger, you could use the FFT version. It's true. <laughs> Just need to reduce it in colors. I don't know. I guess I, I think the... So the problem here is... Um, the way technically that this needs to work is this part needs a lot of repeating stuff, but I do still need to break it up. Um, because we need to be able to have a UV animation that comes in and removes each individual platform except for the middle. Very tricky. <laughs> um, so that's why there's a lot of a lot of that stuff kind of going on. Uh, I just want to copy this one. So basically, we'll have the uh, main. I'm, I'm having the one main texture right now, but then I'm gonna have to break up. break it up over multiple texture pages so it's like individual pieces so each one of these will be represented at, and then a texture animation will have um, them um, I don't know if, so I already have one set up here you can loop it and then so let's say like I put this one on that page. Um, and then I think it just had the wrong palette. So, yeah. So it's supposed to, like, I think I had it on, like, palette four or something like that. Five. No, that doesn't reboot. Uh, none of them really work, do they? There we go. That's the one I was working on. So, like, a water is, like, supposed to come up and then 
wash it away, basically, it's, or make it disappear. And then he's going to use, like, event stuff to lower the, and raise the terrain. But we got to do, like, individual animations for each one. So, yeah, that'll be some kind of interesting thing to do. <laughs> But I do like, like, the concept for the, the portion there. I just need to figure out, like, I need to, like, look at a bunch of reference for, you know, big, big open stone slabs, right? And then we just kind of try stuff out and see what, what looks nice um, to fill in and break up the bare texture. And then we kind of find something for the sides and we're, then we're off to our technical technicalness <laughs> for everything it's going to be a very interesting thing to accomplish that's for sure Okay, um, but yeah, that's a good portion of... The other thing is, like, this is, like, the... Uh, let's just go save it. I want to see what it looks like in-game. Yeah, reducing it. Okay. Yeah, we'll definitely give it a bunch of try tries and see what um, Jumps likes best for the Leviathan symbol in the middle. I wonder why it takes so long to get it to show up on my stream. Thank you very much for the reference for Final Fantasy XII Revenant Wings. As always, coming in clutch. <laughs> Hope you're doing well. Always nice to see a twin. It's really cool. <laughs> yeah, it just needs something to break it up. That's like, it looks really nice. Jacob, thank you very much for the uh, the raid. I appreciate that. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Hello again. Um, we're working on our most recent custom Final Fantasy Tasti Tactics map. This one's for Jumza. It is a water map-ish. It's not going to start off as one. It'll eventually turn into something pretty crazy. But uh, we're just kind of testing the texture we used for the middle. Let's see how it looks. Looks like I have to rotate it because I kind of messed up on where the UVs are. But Overall, it's coming together a lot faster than I thought it would. Um, but there's still a lot of technical and Weird, weird things we have to take into account. But, but, uh, but yeah, anybody coming from a casual Jacob stream? Um, I'm Armored Quarry. I make. I don't know. That's that's a really good question, twins. <laughs> um, so the way uh, Jumsa was mentioning stuff was that he was going to adjust the terrain via events. Apparently that's possible. So 
maybe we don't need a, a different state. But it wouldn't be out of out of the question. Um, and there is water underneath all of these platforms, so if they do become invisible or the terrain changes, um, they just the terrain just needs to change to depth one, and they'll be they'll be in there. So I've got conflicting music going on. So <laughs> sorry about that. But yeah, I'd, um, I'm not really sure um, how we're gonna accomplish whatever we're going to try, but. I do know that I have a really weird idea for how I'm going to make these platforms disappear. That's for dang sure. <laughs> but I'm going to see if I can accomplish it, and that's probably going to be what most of next stream is. That's that's for dang sure. Um, I can't do anything, but uh, at least everything is doing something, and you can play on it, and overall that seems pretty cool. Uh, the heights heights are okay. Like I said, you get down to depth one here, and um, at least we have steps now in case these ones were to go down and be removed from the map. Uh, but all the water seems to be doing okay. Everybody seems to be okay. Go in there. Topography seems okay. I like the uh, I like the look of the colors and everything on the map. Like I said, I just kind of have to break it up a bit more. Like on here, it has the stone, and it feels feels like stone because it's broken up with the different bricks and things like that. So maybe we have to find find a few different methods to get like repeating textures for these portions here on the middle to break it up a little bit, and then uh, the same with all our, our border pieces. Uh, I do think that we kind of hit the nail on the head with the center piece. So, but then again, it, that could be, we could just enlarge it, and it could be the big gigantic Leviathan for the entire middle piece. Um, that, that could be a thing, too. So, we'll, we'll probably experiment with a few things, and then... Um, I wanted to experiment with the animation a little bit more, so... Oh, goodness. I do think that is my time for this evening, though. Um, I know they've been pretty short streams, but... I don't know. Just been trying to uh, stay healthy and that kind of thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop our clock. Pause. And let's go ahead and take a look and see who we can send our friends over to. Uh, but thank you so much for um, the support. And if you guys have followed the first, are still here around from the first raid um, and the new stuff. Um, I'm Armored Cory. I stream on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, uh, and we do custom map work. That's kind of what we're what we're all about here. And uh, just kind of going around and doing stuff. Nobody's. Looks like we're doing too much. Um, I double check to see if anybody's playing Final Fantasy Tactics. No, it doesn't look like it. Um, first streak in a week due to power outages. Interesting. I think we'll send you guys over to Kethel. Um, he's playing some digital... Sorry, Devil Survivor, which is a Shin Megami Tensai game. So, send you guys over to Kethel. He's a wonderful human being. If you have not following him already, please go ahead and do so. Um, and I will see you guys back here on Friday, where hopefully we can get a little bit more done than we did today, but we definitely accomplished a good amount. Uh, thank you again for the support. Really appreciate it, and I will talk to you guys all on Friday. Later. <laughs>